YouTube fan, it's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. I appreciate the love and support. Let me know where y'all from in the comments. Be sure to like, comment, share the video. Tonight, we're going to take it to Patterson, New Jersey, and talk about a squad called the 230 Boys. Let's get right into it. I've been to a lot of different states and a lot of different hoods, and what I have learned is the world is a ghetto. Not just one city or state, all over. Some places might be a little worse than others, but hustling and violence is a universal language. Patterson, New Jersey, from close friends from there, I've been told it's a world of its own. Wild hoods and wild people to go with it. And also a gang culture that, that has gotten more widespread over time. This was home to a group of young men they go by the name 230 Boys. The squad got their name from their area of the city and the store in which they turned into a chill spot called 230 Liquors. Allegedly there, you could not only get your drink, but also whatever else your vice was. The team had this location on lock, also blocks to go with it. A few of them being Godwin Avenue between Rosa Parks and East 18th Street and around the 12th Avenue basketball courts. The squad was holding down their blocks while getting money in the process. Allegedly, this was a busy hood. It was nothing to ride through and see 20 to 32, 30 boys on the block on any given day. The hustle was real. And just like in my city and other cities, Smack and Fent was allegedly the number one seller. As America and inner cities got a hold of the new potent product, it was easier to get, cheaper, but also a lot more dangerous than any smack around. The squad allegedly missed the smack and fent together, creating a cocktail that kept sales coming back and the team was getting real money. Even having a few up and coming rappers in the group, 230 Starter being one of them. With his lyrics being about everyday life in his hood, hustling to survive, the views were coming in, putting the 230 boys in that hood even more on the map. A lot of members were also hoppers, meaning shorties or youngins, still in high school. Some even were star athletes and sports players. But when a young man in 10th grade can make 10 bands a week, it's hard to tell him stay in school and focus on sports. Product was moving and shop jamming. But the 230 boys weren't any strangers to beef. With other squads and ops, the hood wasn't too safe if you didn't belong to the squad. A few incidents would bring heat to the hood. On one alleged situation, a 230 member allegedly hit up a man over beef and fled to Georgia before he was captured. Another situation would take the life of a popular 14 year old girl and injuring a 15 year old as well. Allegedly, police accused none other than 230 Boys rapper 230 Starter for ordering the hit that left the young lady gone. Things were getting crazy. Sources allege that 230 Starter and other members were lucky to escape an attempt on their life. When Ops pulled up and let off shots at the 230 Boys, but hitting and leaving the 12-year-old gone. The squad was mad and allegedly returned that attempt back to original sender. 230 Starter even got arrested for this situation, but somehow only served a few months in prison. Once back to the streets, the team was still hustling, getting money, and protecting their block. But the streets never rest, and enemies don't forget. 230 Starter was still making music and repping his squad when unfortunately he would lose his life as well. Hit up, and what some say was revenge for sending the alleged hit. Patterson police were starting to get thirsty. While the trap was still booming, Fence still being as strong as it was, was responsible for over 60 people ODN and losing their life. That was the link the police needed to infiltrate the 230 boys hood. They dressed up like buyers to go cop from the squad and link some hits and other situations to the organization. Enough for the feds to step in. After investigations, and getting evidence, including wiretaps, personal buys, a massive indictment 
was handed down to dismantle the squad. The ship was sinking, with one of their top guys being hit up and others facing federal gang, racketeering, drug charges, and hits. The one super busy 230 liquor store got super quiet. More of the story. Getting money and beef doesn't mix. Allegedly, some members were good kids, even with plans of going to college, but the influence of their environment rerouted the teams. It's hard to stay focused in the crazy world, but in order to stay alive and free, it's worth a try. Passing New Jersey is a wild city, but not hopeless. Succeed not to fail, so you won't be another hood tail. Man, salute the pass in New Jersey, man. The whole Jersey area, you feel me? Like, one of my close homeboys, his people from, um, I think they from Trenton, you know what I mean? And he was born there, and he spent a little time there, and he told me how wild it get and how wild it is. You know, I've been to Jersey, but like Atlantic City, I never been to like Jersey, Jersey. So I plan on taking a trip out there. You know, I like to travel. I like to go all over and interact with different people and learn different things. That's just me, that's just how I move. But man, it's crazy because when I hear Jersey, it's like more recently I've been hearing about a lot of gangs and a lot of squads. And it seemed like it go down. But the thing about it, if you listen to the story, a lot of the attempts left the wrong people gone. A 12-year-old, a 14-year-old, also a 15-year-old got hit. So it's like dudes running up on each other. And I'm not saying they scared, but they shaky. Like, they not even hitting the right person. And I don't condone no violence. But if you is going to go that route, at least go and get who you coming for. Don't take no innocent person. The 14-year-old girl, they say she was very popular. She was a star basketball player, you know. She was getting looked at, you know what I mean, by major schools. And her life was cut short, you feel me? But man, like I say, man, the moral to this story, man, you can't get money and beef. It just don't go together, man. You feel me? Like, you got to choose one or the other. It's bad enough with the fence and all that. But if you're going to go that route, at least, you know, get your money. Go get you a little business or something. They could have bought the little store they used to be in front of. But, you know, that's just the way I think. But this is another episode of Hood Tales, man. Salute to New Jersey, like I said. Be sure to like, comment, share the video. Let me know where y'all from. Love, family.